Hi there, welcome to this video tutorial on leaving their project maths, functions and calculus. Today we're going to be looking at function composition, which is a topic that appears on both the higher and ordinary papers. First, we're going to see a little analogy that can be used to describe function composition. Then we're going to run through the notation used. And finally, we will do a full sample exam style question. In the very first functions video, we saw that a function can be compared to a simple numerical machine. The machine takes in an input from the domain, applies some sort of rule to manipulate the number, and then spits out the output of the process. Well, let's say I take three different function machines and arrange them one after the other like this. So our input will first pass into f of x, and then the output of f of x will be passed to g of x, and so on. So let's just watch here what happens as x passes through this assembly line. x will first be passed to f of x, where f of x applies its rule and spits out the output. Now, this output is then passed on to g of x, where g of x applies its rule. And the output will be g of f of x. Then this output is passed to h of x, where h of x applies its rule, and our final output is h of g of f of x. Now, to be honest, all those f's and g's and h's make this look a bit confusing, so it's probably best that we start with the numerical example. What I'll do is I'll assign different rules to each of these functions, and then we can send a number through and watch what happens. So let's take f of x to be, I don't know, 2x minus 1 and g of x to be equal to x squared and h of x maybe x plus 4. And let's send through a 2 and see what our final output is. So first the 2 gets sent to f of x where we have 2 by 2 minus 1 which is just 4 minus 1 or 3. Now the 3 gets sent to g of x where we'll have 3 squared, which is just equal to 9. And then the 9 gets sent to h of x, where we have 9 plus 4, which is just equal to 13. And what we have here is just the composition of three functions, f of x, g of x, and h of x. So I suppose function composition just involves putting functions together or rather functions inside of functions, sort of like a function inception. But if this was a real factory and a real assembly line, maybe we wouldn't want to use three machines in series to get our outputs if we could use an equivalent machine, a single equivalent machine that could achieve the same results. So what if we could replace f of x, g of x and h of x with an equivalent super function? or function composition. What would that single function look like? Well, to do that, let's pass through a variable into our assembly line. Instead of passing in a specific number, I'm just going to pass through x, and we can see what happens. I'm going to use the same rules for each of the functions, though. Um, those were 2x minus 1 for f of x, x squared for g of x, and x plus 4 for h of x. So we'll send that x here into f of x, where we just have 2x minus 1 as our output, surprise, surprise. Then we send that to g of x, where it gets squared. So we just have 2x minus 1 squared. That gets sent to h of x, where 4 gets added to it. So we just have 2x minus 1 squared plus 4. And that is our equivalent function. Now, I of course could simplify this a little bit further by multiplying out that bracket there. So 2x minus 1 by 2x minus 1 plus 4. That's just 4x squared minus 4x plus 1 plus 4 which is 4x squared minus 4x plus 5. So that's our equivalent function. 
and we call that h of g of f of x. And notice how the order of these letters that appear in our function notation are the opposite to the order in which the input gets passed into these function machines. And now let's just double check that this is an equivalent function by inputting a 2 like we did on the last slide. So let's see what h of g of f of 2 is. There's so many brackets here. Is that enough? Yes. Okay, so we're going to have 4 by 2 squared minus 4 by 2 plus 5. So that's equal to 4 by 4 minus 8 plus 5, which is 16 minus 8 plus 5, which is 8 plus 5, which is just equal to 13. And 13 was our final answer when we went through the individual functions and saw what happened as it went along. I think what a lot of people actually find the most confusing about function composition is the notation that's used and they get tripped up over that. And it doesn't really help that there's actually four different ways to say the exact same thing. So if you want to talk about something getting passed first to f of x and then on to g of x, we can use one of these four notations. So we saw this third one here in the last example, but you could similarly use any of the other three. So sometimes you use this kind of little circle between the G and the F, or you might use nothing at all. But really the most important thing is knowing what comes first. And as we saw in the last slide, the order of the letters is the opposite to the order of the actual functions. So first we would pass our input to f of x and then on to g of x.